the busy phase we're seeing in the greater Atlantic is likely to get active with the possibilities of named storms developing over the next two weeks continuing to rise albeit our models are still playing catch up with coming into the favorable phasing with our madden julian oscillation over phases one through three africa the middle east and the indian ocean but regardless it's going to stir up some additional action out there across the tropics welcome back to the weather center everybody thank you so much for joining me on this wednesday afternoon august 6 2025 i've got you all the latest information and some of the newest trends that i'm going to continue to monitor over the next seven days not fully associated with what's currently on the national hurricane center's page but with what's likely to pop up by friday if if not Saturday, maybe even sooner than that with some of the latest updates that we've had earlier today. So if you are brand new to the channel, it would mean sincerely a ton to all of us. If you kindly consider clicking that subscribe button, it's great to have you with us as a part of the Weather Center community as we continue to grow fast approaching the climatological peak of the hurricane season. We'll talk a little bit about what to expect there, as well as Colorado State University's August outlook towards the end of this video. So stick around. Let's give that like button a little nudge. Drop me a comment in the comments section down below. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and let's share this information with folks you believe would benefit from it. And I think a lot of us can benefit from it, especially with what lies ahead. And with that being said, we'll go ahead and just start getting into it. Here's National Hurricane Center's homepage. Good news right out of the gate. Dexter continues to strengthen, believe it or not, deepen now to a 999 millibar tropical storm. Max sustained winds at 50 miles an hour, but notice its forward progress is accelerating as well, moving east-northeast at 15 miles an hour, and it will continue to do so, staying far away from everybody out there, unless you just so happen to be one of the unfortunate folks perhaps cruising around the North Atlantic in Dexter's immediate path. We've actually seen a nudge downward with disturbance disturbance number one here off the southeast coast. We do have an area of low pressure out there. If I were to show you the satellite, you can see plain as day that counterclockwise spin where the yellow X is currently pictured here on National Hurricane Center's graphic, but it's fairly scarce. It's a benign circulation. It has no thunderstorms with it. In fact, the elongated tropical wave south of this current AOI is a little healthier and more robust as it tracks generally towards the west, upping our rain chances here in central Florida. Then finally, last but not least, disturbance number two, a tropical wave that has moved off the coast of Africa, moving into more and more favorable conditions for that gradual development mentioned there by National Hurricane Center. And to tell you all the truth, I'll bring myself back into frame. I don't think this little blip actually called Invest 96L. This has now officially been designated 96L, I believe, earlier this afternoon around the 2 o'clock update, AL96. I don't foresee we're going to see immediate development within the next day or two. I think we have to get it up out of the MDR, get it away from the dry air slugs that continue to wrap around our somewhat enhanced subtropical high positive North Atlantic oscillation, and then we'll actually be in a pretty good run-in to realize our very first hurricane of the Atlantic season by about when the calendar states we typically see it, August 11th, between August and 11th and August 13th. So in reality, our prior forecast is still verifying. If you all remember, I'd mentioned the Hurricane Charlie anniversary. The thing is, though, with that leftover tut and that upper low that's helping to kind of break our feature in half, that Atlantic high pressure, that's what's causing this feature to lift up and out. And thankfully, it looks like we're going to avoid the leeward, windward islands altogether. It's the feature back behind this one that I really want us to pay attention to. Here's a look at your GOES East full disk satellite shot. Like I would said, if you look off the immediate coast of the Carolinas, we're starting to see a little bit of bubbling up a thunderstorm action on the tail end, I guess you could say the westernmost fringe of what is trying to couple once again with Tropical Storm Dexter, a frontal boundary that's out there. So maybe that's what's responsible for percolating the environment up there just a little bit. But this morning when I first glanced at the true color viz, I saw the swirl, but that was it. 
just a lovely looking swirl that you can admire from a distance. There was really no action or enhancement with it. There's our tropical wave moving through the upper Bahamas right now, giving us some thunderstorms down near Lake Okeechobee, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, southeast and southernmost Florida getting into the Keys. And it looks like that influence is also getting into portions of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and Cuba with a little bit of activity back further towards the east over Dominican Republic. And it looks like some orographic, those mountainous thunderstorms are firing up over the western portions of Puerto Rico. Another area of interest out there in the Pacific, but I want us to quickly turn our attention to the ITCZ. There goes Invest 96L getting its act together and slowly but surely curling up out of that monsoon trough configuration, allowing that tropical wave axis to finally pull north and hopefully break away here soon per model data and what National Hurricane Center is thinking for it to get off to the races and develop moving generally off in this direction. It's going to follow this feature and Dexter in hot pursuit. That's going to be kind of the general track tendency with these three features going up and out, thankfully avoiding everybody minus maybe throwing some bad weather towards Bermuda. And this little guy right there, this one right there, as the monsoon trough configuration and the ITCZ breaks down with these higher amplitude waves coming off, that's actually gaining confidence in our models that this could be a rogue system to watch in the Caribbean. Now, I'm not saying a developer, but at least a bit of a casual spin is what we'll call it. And I'm very interested in what the models are doing this afternoon, and even overnight yesterday, in terms of that phenomena. Here's a quick glance at our vorticity. It's going to be this cluster of vort right there that's going to accelerate off towards the west and eventually find its way off the coast of Africa. And this afternoon, our models are a little more aggressive. Like we've been saying the last couple of video updates, we're still waiting for our phasing to properly align in the low and upper levels of the environment. If you've been following this channel for a while, I love to mention how with the tropics, you need everything in alignment from the low Low, mid, uppers, even the uppermost layer of the atmosphere. Getting closer to the tropopause, the stratosphere, you literally need everything in vertical alignment. And I think the models are finally catching up with that since today is the sixth. You can see that ITCZ breakdown is getting ready to unfold. We have 96L wrapping up towards the north like so. It's expected to break away within the next 48 hours. And then we'll watch as this cluster of vorticity spin makes its way off the west coast of Africa. Now, here's the latest on Invest 96L. I'll take you through some of the latest data that we have right now. Estimation based on satellite, about a 35 mile an hour peak wind within the wave axis itself, gale force conditions along the north and eastern side of it. It only shows up as a non-tropical feature right now. Remember, invest means we have a closed center or we're getting close to a closed center, but it doesn't mean that we're developing just yet. And I don't think we're quite there yet. If you take a look at the ship's guidance, we're anticipating in the next couple of days, we'll see a tropical storm start to form off of this. And even this, I think, is a little too quick. We'll have to wait and see what it looks like like once it does lift away from all those additional vortices embedded down in that ITCZ. But regardless, even the ship's data, look at that towards the back end of the 72-hour period here, we're looking at the possibility of finally realizing our first hurricane. Rapid intensification, not likely, by the way. I know you can see the words right there. That's not what's going to be the case until maybe it gets into the subtropics. We can start to deepen this thing down just a little bit more. Here's a quick glance at Africa. You can see that wave train and a very robust easterly jet continuing to crank up. Moisture pockets are becoming a lot healthier as well. If you look up towards the northwest coast of Africa, we're no longer seeing the deep, dark shades of dry air. If you look back towards the Middle East here, northeastern Africa, that's where you see the dry air plunging down towards the south and east. Totally different story as we help to supplement the environment more or less with a more powerful African easterly jet and these MCS features that eventually go on to become our tropical waves are becoming a bit healthier as a result. Now, going to wave number three out there. That's all we're going to focus on right now because to tell you the truth, nothing else is impacting anybody. So if you want to talk more about that, let me know in the comments if you're still with me. But right now, this is what I'm going to be paying most attention to. This is our 12Z GFS Ensemble.
I'll go ahead and fast forward the clock. This is the 13th of August. Notice right in through here, this is where we're expecting Invest 96L, potentially future Aaron at this point, moving up towards the north-northwest, just to the immediate east of Bermuda. It's going to be a close call. We'll have to see what shakes out in terms of our steering pattern. But then from this point forward, notice our subtropical ridge builds back in as that tropical wave comes off of Africa. This is now out to the 18th of August. These are some of the little members percolating down there indicating we could have a developing tropical cyclone in the form of a high-end tropical storm or even a hurricane. Our deterministic models this afternoon were off the chain. I'm not going to show them to you because good Lord, the discontinuity between runs is astounding. If I were to show that to you and brief you the model like some people do, you'd think I have no idea what I'm talking about because it went from going west to north to south to east. It's like, no, no. We're going to look at our ensemble since we're forecasting much further than 10 days out. So a lot can change. There's a lot of variability in the forecast. It's this right here that I'm going to be watching the most. All of our models, the Icon, Canadian, the GFS, the Euro, even the, G the JMA, the UK, every model you want to put on the table is anticipating development once again behind 96L. It's this right there, a weakness and a parting of our subtropical high pressure here and our negative PNA pattern trying to bully the upper ridge that's expected to come up over the southeast United States into more so central CONUS, allowing for an evacuation of this system. Now, I can't guarantee we're going to miss you all together down here in Puerto Rico, the Leeward Islands, the U.S. British Virgin Islands. We need to all keep our head on a swivel. And when I show you the ensembles, you can clearly see that bifurcation there. And we are wobbling back and forth. I have the comparator tool pulled up. I'm comparing this afternoon's 12Z to yesterday's, or I should say overnight zero Z. So if you notice an enormous swath, some continue to take this feature west-northwest towards the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, and into the southeast United States. If I switch back to yesterday's run, though, look at the difference how much further towards the north we have trended. Will this continue? We don't know yet, because look at how far out we are. This is 14 days. We're talking two weeks, the back end of August, and time is already moving fast as it is, so I don't even want to focus on that. Let me go back in time, though. Look near the Lesser Antilles, though. You see those couple of little spaghetti members floating through the pattern there, just beyond 60 west longitude? That is something that's been very interesting to watch. The GFS, the I Icon captured it. The Euro has some whispers of it in the mid-level vorticity, closer to 700, not so much at 850. But then if you go to today's run, four days from now, look at that. We actually have tropical storm members moving through the Lesser Antilles. So it certainly has my attention. It's way too early to notice. National Hurricane Center obviously has not highlighted anything, and this is within four days' time. Not confident this bolsters into anything worth worrying about, let alone even concerned about, but it will bring some tropical-like impacts to our Lesser Antilles. I know I have a lot of viewers and friends down there, so you all want to pay attention to this. And I, I'll admit, you know, it's got my attention. It's a little blip in the atmosphere and the pattern down there that models are suddenly latching onto, and they're upticking pretty steadily. You take a look at the GEFS, the ensembles of the GFS, and again, good luck trying to forecast exactly where this is going to go. We kind of have stage one nailed down. Models as of the last three to four runs, consecutive runs, even beyond that with certain models themselves, whether you're looking at the American, the Euro, etc., are unanimously calling for a developing tropical wave behind 96L. So we can check that box, figuratively speaking, but when you look at the dispersion, the bifurcation as it's called, we have a speed discontinuity, how fast or slow this is going to move, and then we have a steering discontinuity. Older model runs were definitely calling for more dominant high pressure. Our teleconnection outlooks, our longer range computer models, the dynamical models when they're talking just the location of our upper and low height features, those are still calling for a negative PNA and a neutral pattern over the Atlantic, meaning just general steering, westerly winds coming off the United States and then easterly winds out across the tropics, which would technically bring it in to our hotspot area. The kicker is what synoptic features Feature is going to be there in this general quadrant of the world 14 days from now. 
give or take, you know, obviously ebbs and flows 12 to 14 days from there. And then we'll have to wait and see. There's going to be a lot of changes, but one thing is for certain confidence is growing. We will see more development. We're still going to be in that busy phase. Conditions are ready to rock and roll. We just have to give it more time to dial in that background pattern. You take a look at your MJO, and we are definitely forecasting an excited phase for the next one through three phases, one, two, three of the MJO phases. When it comes over Africa, positions itself into a bit of a brief standing wave, Indian Ocean, the negative Indian Ocean dipole has cooled off. Well, I should say that western portions of the indian ocean have cooled off just as we had briefed back in early july late june if you all recall i had pulled up a couple of different seasonal outlooks and discussions and dynamical models were suggesting those waters could cool and i think that's also why we're slowing the progression of the mjo we're not as loaded up in hot water everywhere from the indian ocean to the maritime continents and then as you can see i didn't brief this on monday or i didn't brief it yesterday i should say we do have an update on our global tropics hazards and we are now at a 40 to 60% shot between August 13th and the 19th for enhanced tropical cyclone activity in the western tropical Atlantic, moving generally towards the west-northwest, I'll add. So we'll have to see if today is more of a trend or a one-off with models just struggling simply with the steering currents that far out, which is to be expected. You, you, we barely have things drilled down within three to five days, let alone two plus weeks. And then here you go. This is me over at News 6, digital meteorologist, News 6 meteorologist. If you want to take a look at all the latest information from CSU, Dr. Phil Klotzbach has put out their latest August forecast. Head on over to clickorlando.com or just simply drop me a comment in the comment section. I'll get back to you, kind of fill you in on the, the what is it called, the Cliff Notes version. And that's all she wrote, guys. We are good to go. That's it. We got a lot to watch still, but again, I want to emphasize that we're just watching for now. There is no imminent threat. I want to emphasize that more than ever because there's going to be increased noise and chaos on the interwebs and social media with all this action popping off, especially for the lot of us who've been waiting for this time. We're geared up. We're ready to rock, and we're going to keep it straight, keep it real with you all. And thank you so much for hanging with me to the end of this latest update. I hope that you've had a great start to your week, at least the first half, and you continue to do so during the second half. I've got a lot going on in the personal realm. I've got a lot going on in the background. I'm mentally and physically exhausted. I, I don't want to disclose. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to pull out a sob story, but just letting you know I'm doing my best. And all of your supportive and generous comments and positive energy have been remarkable. It's been amazing. And I thank you all sincerely for that. So we'll see you again soon. Live stream probably coming at you again Friday night alongside another tropical update. So be on the lookout for that. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.